Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and before we go any further, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell notification. That way, when we are doing our thing, YouTube lets you know. Also, check in the description for a link to our Patreon account and see how you can help and support this channel. Today, we have another episode of Board Game Playthrough, and today we'll be playing through this game right here, The Castles of Burgundy, The Card Game. And in particular, I'll be playing this game solo. So this is what the board looks like, or the table looks like set up. You have all of these separate cards. The components in this game are all card based. And these all have a picture of a die on it and a certain amount of numbered uh, pips on each die. You have the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, and the six, and you line it up as so. We have a bunch of cards here on the top. You have your cards indicating the rounds of the game. There are five rounds in the game, A, B, C, D, and E. And each of the rounds comes with certain bonuses that players can procure for themselves if they accomplish certain feats within that given round. Uh, we also have these worker cards, which is a way of mitigating the dice rolling, which is typically the way Castles of Burgundy is played out. The card game will have cards replacing the dice, but again, you're going to need some mitigation, so we have those workers as a resource, and each human player, in this case as a solo game, only one human player, will start with at least one worker in their starting supply. We also have silver stack here, which again, each human player will start with one. We have these two stacks of goods that can be traded in for victory points throughout the game. Again, uh, the human player is randomly assigned one of these goods. We have two stacks of animals. The human player also has one of those. And then we have a bunch of the victory point cards that players will be accruing and acquiring throughout the game as they accomplish and unlock certain things. Now, we always have these action cards, which are the estate cards, basically, which you're using to acquire and build your individual estates. And for the setup here, what happens is at the beginning of each round, each of the five rounds, we draw in a two-player game. It's according to the player count or in a... Uh, Solo game, because a solo game is technically a two-player game with an Automa or AI opponent, you draw the top seven cards from this deck here, and then you place them each on the one, two, three, four, five, and six spots, respectively, in order. And then finally, that seventh card will be placed according to the die number on the actual card. So in this case, we have a five on this brown card. So we're going to place it, line it up here on the five spot of these uh, cards right here. Now, the Automa or AI player is referred to as the uh, Aaron player. It's an acronym for an almost real opponent. And the way Aaron plays is, first of all, at the beginning of the game, you're going to create five stacks of cards, of action cards for Aaron, corresponding with the five different rounds that will be played throughout the game. For the first round, you're going to draw a stack of three. For the second round, a stack of four. For the third round, a stack of five. For the sixth round, a stack of six. And for the fifth round, uh, or the fourth round, a stack of six. And for the fifth round, a stack of seven. So with each subsequent round, Aaron is going to get progressively more challenging, and he's going to have more cards available to him. Now... The human player always will have, or the human players, will always have a six cards to choose from. Here's my six card. Six cards to choose from for their actions. Now, before the human player goes on each round, the Aaron player is going to take their turn first. And it's very simple. You take all the cards in their stack, and you immediately add it to their estate. So we see that there are three different types of cards here. The gray, the brown, and the yellow. There are no sets to be completed. And we have created the startup of Aaron's estate. Now, the human player will take their turn after Aaron, and the way it works is, normally you flip over one of these cards and then decide what you wanna play, but for the first turn in each given round, you actually flip two cards, because you're always gonna have two cards to choose from from your actions. And the way the card works, let's look at the anatomy of the card is, first of all, again, as I mentioned earlier, in the top of the card, you have a picture of a die with a certain amount of numbered pips, and this is basically the equivalent of your die roll, right? As you're rolling dice in, in regular Castles of Burgundy. And that's how, it, based on that number, is how you're going to decide what actions you want to carry out. Also, on the bottom of the card, you're going to see an orange circle with a yellow number inside of it. And that's the amount of victory points if you ever complete a set of three within your estate that you actually place down, then that's how many victory points you're going to earn. Also, if you're ever the first person to complete a set within a given color, you're going to earn these bonus victory points for that respective color. So it's almost like a race to the finish as players are trying to procure these different sets within the different color types. 
So I drew a two and a four. And based on this, I have a bunch of options as to which actions I can take. So first of all, I can choose to take a card from the display that matches one of these numbers. I have a two or a four, so I could take either this or I could take either this. Remember, I do have a worker to start off with, which the worker helps you modify the different um, die rolls or the, the, the die cards that you use by either adding one or subtracting one. You could also roll over a six to a one and vice versa. So the first thing you can do again is choose to take a card from the display or you can place a project that's already uh, in your project supply. You can have a maximum here. You have this project card to keep your projects under. You can only have a maximum of three projects at a time. So when you take a card from the display, you don't immediately add it to your estate. Instead, you add it to your project card. And again, you have a threshold of three. So you can either take a card from your display and add it to your projects, or you could take a card that's already within your projects and add it to your estate. The third thing you could do with your action is you can decide to sell goods. As I mentioned, each player starts with a good to begin with, and they could acquire more throughout the game. And on the top of the good card, you actually have two die numbers. In this case, you have a five and a six. And if you use the corresponding die number, you can sell your goods. And on the bottom of the goods, you see that there's victory points. So you'll get a victory point for each good that you sell and you can only sell goods of one type right but as many as you can or have of that given type you also collect one silver uh from the supply for each good that you sell and also very important in a multiplayer game every time you sell goods you also earn the starting player marker so that you could be the first player in the next round the fourth action you could take with your turn is you can restock your workers up to two and this is a very very important thing to keep in mind. In regular Castles of Burgundy, you just accrue uh, workers. If you take that action, the gain worker action, you just accrue two workers. In this case, you restock back up to two. So if you have one worker, you can only gain one worker if you use this action. If you have two workers, then you can not even use this action. It's not even optional. But there are other ways of accruing more workers than two. So the fifth action you could do is you can take one silver, just one. And the sixth action you can do is you can convert workers and or silver into victory points. Any combination of three workers and or silver points can be turned in for one victory point. So that is very helpful because in regular Castles of Burgundy, you don't have much you can do with these excess workers and silver. They're kind of valueless for you towards the end of the game. But in this case, that is not the case at all. Okay, so, okay, so now let's do my turn. So I have the two and the four to pick from. And I'm actually gonna use the four here, I'm gonna create a discard pile, to draft this card right here, the mine. And again, this goes immediately into my project uh, stack right here, which I only have a maximum of three I could keep at a time. And then I continue going, the human player, there's no alternating in the solo game. The human player takes all six of his or her turns consecutively. So I will draw one card this time. And again, I have two to pick from. I have a one and a two. And I'm actually going to use this two right here in order to take this mine from my uh, projects and add it to my estate. Now, this card, as soon as I build it, is actually going to get me two silver that I immediately add to my storage. So I've got two more silver to uh, spend. By the way, there is a bonus action that is not within the two actions, or not the two actions, the dice action that you get when you turn in a card. There's a bonus action that you can do once per round uh, where you can pay three coins in order to, or once per turn, I should say, you can pay three silver in order to draft the top three cards from this stack right here. And you could choose what to do with them. You could actually play them for their die number, or you can add them to your projects, right? So I'm actually, since I have the three silver right now, um, yeah, since I have them, I am going to pay them in order to in order to do that action. So I will flip over the top three cards here, and I've got three sixes and a one, 
but I might want to consider these as projects. And you know what? I actually am. I'm going to grab this mine right here as a project because I want to try to complete this set right here. And then you discard the remaining cards. Okay, so I'll proceed to my next turn. I add one card. I've got two to choose from. I have a three and I have a one. Uh, let's see what I want to do. So I could, yeah, you know what? I'm going to use this three here to draft this card right here. And these purples are referred to as cloisters. And you see that they have no special benefit for you. Because instead, what they have is they give you six victory points if you complete a set of purples. And also, these count as wilds. You can actually choose to add them to an estate of another color. However, if they are wilds, they're not going to score you six victory points for that set. They're going to score you the amount of points designated by the actual color that you're choosing to assign it to. Uh, I'm going to set this apart here all by itself and try to create a, um, a stack with these purple. Um, by the way, the if at the end of the round you ever have fewer points than the Aaron player, you immediately lost. That is the goal of the game, to stay within the game so at the end of each round, you are not behind. You have to be at least tied to the Aaron player. Okay, so let's proceed to my next turn here. I have a three and I have a one. What do I want to do? I am going to use this one right here in order to draft this castle here and add it to my projects. Oh, I accidentally, I added this to my estate. This should be in my projects, which by the way, you know what? Now that I think about it, let me take this back right here. Now that I think about it, I will put this back here. I'm actually gonna take, because I, I have a limit again of projects that I could have at a time. If I ever draft a fourth one, I would have to discard one of the previous three. Don't want that to happen. So instead, I'm going to use this three here to build this purple and add it to my estate because, again, it has a three. Okay. And now I will proceed to my next turn. I got two cards to pick from. I will use the one right here to draft this, as I mentioned earlier. And then I have this three here. There's nothing for me to draft, nothing for me to place. Or is there, um, let's see, this is an interesting one. So I think I am, I'm going to use my worker here to modify this three here to a four. I can modify plus one or minus one. I'm going to make this a four. And with that four, I'm going to build this castle here. And the way this works, it only gives you two victory points if you complete a set. But every time you play it, you get to use it as a die of any number of your choice. So I'm gonna choose for this to be a die with the number five. I think I want this building here and the buildings give you different special one-time bonuses the moment you build them and the rule book specifies which there are. So here I have the boarding house. I get to take one good or one animal from one of the four open decks and place it in my storage. So I think I am gonna do that once I build it. Right now it just goes into my projects okay so we are done with the first round and right now we are tied they have no victory points and i have no victory points so because of that the game continues but again if aaron happened to have had more points than me at this moment the game would be immediately over so we clear up the remaining cards here and again at the beginning of each round we move this here to indicate that we're no longer in round a now we're in round b we draw the top seven cards here and then we place them here we line them up on the display one by one in numerical order here and then finally for the seventh one we look at the die number on the card which in this case is a two and that's where it will go on the display okay so now the Aaron player has these four cards that they're going to add to their estate they will add a blue they will add a second brown they will add a second yellow and they will add a green. So there's two sets that they're very, very close to completing, completing. So that's something I have to bear in mind. Okay, so now it is my turn, the human player, and I will get my six cards for this round. And let's see what I will do. So again, we flip over the top two cards to start the round so that you have two choices to pick from. I have a five and a six. What do I want to do? 
So I think this building here would be helpful. But you know what? I got some buildings here that would be even more helpful. So you know what? I'm going to use this six here to build this mine, which will immediately get me two silver. <coughs> okay. All righty. Then, I should only have that much. Okay. Then I will flip over one more card here. And now I've got the four and the five. I'm going to use the four here to draft this card right here. So I can have another purple. And let me discard the four. I'll flip over another card here. I've got a four and a five again. Uh, I'm going to use this five to restock up to two workers. So I could be able to use them to modify die rolls or die draws in the future. Okay, I will draw another card. And I've got a three and a five to pick from. And with that three, I'm actually going to use this three to draft this card here. And I'm on my maximum here at... In my projects, I have three. So I better find a way to uh, actually add these to my estate. Okay, so I will draw one more card here. I've got a five and a six to pick from. I'm going to use... <clears throat> I am going to use the five here. I'm going to use the five here, but I'm going to use a worker to turn it into a four. And I will build this city here. And this lets me gain either one good card or one animal card from the top of the respective decks here. So with animals, you want to have all four of the animals. There's four different animal types because that's how you're going to score the most points. So I do have a cow here and the top of these two stacks have a pig and a chicken, which happen to be different animals. So it would be very, very helpful. So I'm going to pick from the pig one right here. And underneath is a cow, so I'll probably go for the chicken next. So now I got two, which two different animal types is the minimum to score one point. So theoretically, I have one point. And then for my last turn, I'm going to spend my last worker here to turn this six. Huh. Do I want to do that? You know what? No. I am not going to do that. I am not going to spend that worker. Instead, I'm going to use this six to draft this card here. And these cards are very helpful. These are the knowledge cards because every time you play them, you're gonna gain two workers. So that's gonna be helpful for me to gain more workers in the future. And I'm gonna add this here to my projects. Okay, so we are done with the second round and the dummy player, we cleared this up. The dummy player has no victory points and I have one, so it's all good. I'm still alive. We will move on to round C. And now, again, we'll add the top seven cards. Three, four, five, six, seven. The top seven cards. We'll add them down in order here. Okay. And then the sixth one, we look at the number, and it's a one, so we'll go back here. Now we'll grab the next stack of errands, which this time is five cards, and we're going to add it to his estate. So he adds a gray right there. He has a yellow there, so he's the first player to complete yellow. So we will give him the one-point victory bonus. He's going to get, plus this uh, set itself is going to give him four victory points. So he already is at five points. He's the first to get there. We'll add this yellow here, or green, I should say. We'll start a new stack of yellows. And we have the blues here. So he's got two blues, two grays, and two browns. He is very, and two greens, he is very close to doing some dangerous things. So I am to be intimidated. Okay, so let me draw six cards here. And let's see what I want to do. So again, you start the round, you flip over the top two. I have a two and a four. I will use this two right here to add this to my estate. And now I'm doing pretty good. Okay, I draw one card. I have two to pick from. I'm going to use this four to add this to my estate. And this is awesome because this set right here of the purples, this is a four, it gives me six victory points, plus I'm the first to complete this right here. I get the bonus one point here, so I am alive for the time being. Uh, okay, so I will flip over one more card. I've got a five and a five to pick from. So 
what do I want to do with the five and the five? Um, you know, I think, I think I'm going to use this first five here to collect one silver. And now I have three silver again, which I'm going to use to draw, to use the once a turn action. You could turn in three silver in order to flip over the top three cards from this stack here and either use one of them for their die numbers or add one to your projects. So I think this is the way to go because I am one gray away from completing the set. I'm going to add this to my projects and I'll discard the other two. Now I will flip over one card. I got two cards to choose from, a five and a six. I will discard this five to add this gray over here, which will gain me two silver. But also, I am going to get a bonus for completing the grays. And by the way, very important, I forgot a very important detail in this game. And it's that, so I'm going to get this bonus for completing the grays, and it's going to give me four points itself. Every time you complete a set, at least the human players, you look at the current round card and the possible uh, uh, bonus options. So I completed two sets this time, so I could do this twice. You could either get one animal card, one good card, two workers, two silver, or one silver and one worker. So I think in my case, I am going to get, for the first bonus, I'm going to get an animal card. And I got the chicken here. And the sheep, which is the only one I'm missing, is right underneath there. So I'm pretty good to go in the future, hopefully. And then for my second bonus, for my second bonus, I am going to, I am going to grab two more silver. That's what I'm going to do. No, no, no. You know what? I'm going to grab a silver, a silver and a worker for my bonus, for my second bonus, because that's the other option you had. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. And now I have three silver again, folks, which I will use again for my once per turn action to draft the top three cards here. Choose if I want to keep one, add it to my um, supply, my project supply, or use one for their die numbers. And this is very interesting. Oh, not, not very good numbers here. Um, so because the numbers are not the greatest, I think for the time being, I'm just going to draft... No, no, no. I will use this three here in order to draft this castle here, which could be very helpful for me shortly. All right. And then we discard the rest. Let's add one more card here. We've got the three and the six. The three and the six. And I'm going to use this three here to add this yellow card, which is very important because I can no longer win that bonus. But what I can do is I can gain its two worker bonus or benefit from uh, doing that. So I got a couple of workers to deal with here. And then finally, I've got this six. And with this six, I'm gonna actually, I'm actually gonna use one of those workers for this six, discard it, and I'm gonna turn that six into a five. And I'm going to place this castle down. And what this does is it gives me a bonus action with any imaginary die number of my choice. I'm going to choose to take this two right here. This number two. Make it number two. So I could draft this castle card here and hopefully get, get it and gain more points. Okay, so we're done with the round. Again, I got to make sure I have more points than Aaron. Aaron here has five points. Me, I currently have... 10, 11, 12, 13 points. So I am safe for the time being. We will discard all of these cards here. And then we will move on to round D. And we will indicate that here. It's the penultimate round, the second to last round. Then we will add to the display seven cards once again. So we will add them in order here. One, two, three... Okay, and then finally the seventh card, we look at the die number, it's a five, and we put the five right here. Okay, as you can see, this game, although it's a small card game, does end up taking lots of table real estate. Okay, so now we will proceed to Aaron's turn, and we will grab his next stack, which is six cards, and they will all immediately be added to um, Aaron's estate. So Aaron completed the green, so he will get a bonus for the green right here. And 
he will complete the brown, so he will get the bonus for the brown as well. Um, he will start a new stack of brown. He completes the blue, so he does get the blue bonus. So Aaron's doing very well for himself. And he's, com he's continuing a second set of the yellows and browns, respectively. Okay, so I'm going to have to get cracking here because Aaron's looking really good. One, two, three, four, five, six cards for me as a human player. And again, at the beginning of the round, you flip over the top two. All right, I got two ones. What do I want to do with that? Um, I'm going to use one of these ones in order to build this castle right here. And I complete that set, which first of all gives me this bonus right here. And then I get to get the rounds reward. So in round D, I could either get two silver, two workers, or one worker and one silver. So let's see what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to actually choose to gain two silver with that action, with that bonus. Okay. Now what do I want to do? Let's flip over the next card. I have a six and I have a one. A six and I have a one. Uh, I'm going to use this one here to draft this uh, a uh, animal farm card right here. Because I could use one more animal. It'll get me a, a good amount of points. I believe one, two diff one animal type is zero points. Two animal types is one point. Three animal types is two points. And four animal types is three or is it four? Let me... Check right now. No, four different animal types is four victory points. So that's a big jump right there. So let me uh, flip over the next card. I have two sixes to pick from. Two sixes, and I'm not liking these sixes. I think I'm just going to turn in one of these sixes for a silver. And I'm going to use my once per turn action to turn in three silver to flip over the top three cards right here. Okay. And let us see. Uh, five, four, one, um, are any of these helpful for me? Are any of these helpful for me? Um, you know what? I'm going to use the five to gain this right here. This is the five to draft this building right here. Because this tower, once I build it, will earn me goods, uh, or allow me to trade goods. So that'll be very, very helpful. And then I'll discard the rest. I'll flip over the next card, and I have a two, and I have a six. And I'm going to use one of my workers here to turn this two into a three. And with that three, I'm going to build this right here, which allows me to add any animal to my storage. And I'm going to add the one animal that I'm missing, which is the sheep, which will now give me four points just for my different animal types. Okay, I'll draw the last card here, and I've got a two and a six to pick from. And again, I'm going to choose to use one worker here to modify this two, turn it into a three, and I will build this tower here and check over here in the rule book real quick, the tower or the watchtower here. I get to take one victory point card from the supply and place it beside my estate card. So this is an additional victory point card that is available to me just from building that tower right there. Okay. And then for my final choice, I have a six right here. What do I want to do with that six? I think I am going to really, 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 really tough. I think I'm going to take this six here and turn it in for a, ugh, for a silver. I'm going to turn it in for a silver. Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to turn it in to replenish back up to two workers. That's what I'm going to do. And I'm done with the round. So let's compare the points and see if I'm still in it. So the Aaron player has four points. They have seven points. They have 11 points. They have 15 points, 16, 17, 18, 19 points. I have six points, 10 points, 12 points. 13, 14, 15, 16 points, plus my four points for my four different types of animals, which is 20. So I am currently in the lead by one, which means the game will continue. Thank heavens. Okay, so we will discard all of these here, and we will proceed to the last round. 
where we will draw seven cards, add them to the display. All right, one by one over here. And then finally, the seventh card, we'll look at the number there, and it's a two, so it will go right here on the two of the display. And then we'll take the seven cards that Aaron has here, add them all to his estate, so he completes yet another brown set. He will begin a new blue set here. He will begin a new green set right here. We're running out of space. Oh, goodness, he's going to begin a purple set, but he's not going to be able to finish that. He'll complete another yellow set and begin a purple. So that is pretty much it. So he went from 19 points. He added seven more. So he's at 26. I'm at 20. That is the number for me to beat. So let's see if I can do it. Okay, so let me get my six cards as a player. One, two, three, four, five, six. Again, at the beginning of the round, you flip over the top two. You got two choices to pick from, the six and the five. I'm going to use this six right here in order to draft this five right there. Um, what else can I do? All right, then I will flip over the next card. I have a six and a five again. And I'm going to use, huh, uh, 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 this is going to be tough, Harry. This is going to be tough. Um, all right, I'm going to use this five. I'm going to use a worker here. I'm going to use one worker to turn this five into a four. And I will draft this city card right here. Okay. Then I will proceed again. I have a six and a six to pick from. I will use this six here to add this uh, boarding house right here. And now I've completed a set with these. And this also lets me draft either one good or one um, animal from the top of those decks and add them. Now, I'm going to look at the good I have, which is this one in particular, the brown one. And because there's one here on the top, I'm actually going to draft it. Okay, there we go. So I get one of those. All right, so I will add one more card here, and I have a five and a six. And what do I want to do? I'm going to use... <clears throat> this is going to be interesting, folks. This is going to be very, very interesting. I think I'm going to have to complete this green set here in order to win. And I'll barely win. So I'm going to use this five right here. Five right there to draft this guy right here. Then I will flip over this card. Oh, I got two sixes. That is kind of painful. I will use one six here in order to... And I'll add a worker here to modify that six to a five so that I can build this right here. And I will draft an animal, not that it matters because you do not score anymore. Um, the most points you could score is four, no matter how many additional animals you draft. So whatever, let me just draft one right here. Um, oh, wait a second. Huge, huge, huge. I completed this. That's very important. We're in round E. So I could gain a bonus from this of either a worker or a silver. Um, ooh, you know what? It's not as huge as I thought it was. Um, nope, it's not going to be that huge after all. Uh, nope. Uh, whatever. I'll gain a silver. Okay. And then for my last turn, I have this six. And I'm going to use this six in order to ship these two goods right here. Because I needed either a five or a six to ship them. And because I do have a five or a six, I should say, I get to sail, ship both of these, which will give me two more victory points. Plus, I get one gold for each of the goods that I sell. Or well, one silver, I should say. So that's two more silver. Which, by the way, gives me three silver. Three silver. So if I turn the... I could turn these three silver in for one victory point. Remember, one of the... Oh, no, actually, I can't because I'm done with my actions. I can't do that. 
So, but I, what I can do is I can use my once per turn ability to, to turn in three silver in order to draft the top three cards of the stack here and either use them as a number or as a project I could take. So I still have a chance, folks, because I believe right now the score is 25-26 in favor of Aaron. But if I roll a or draft a one, if I draft a one, I will be able to build this and get myself four more points to take the lead. So if I get a three, so this is a one, that's no good. I need a three. This is a four, very close, but not close enough. And finally, the last card is a three, folks. I did not set this up. This is not rigged. I drew a three, which means I get to build this right here and complete that set and the game is over. And again, Aaron has four, seven, 11, 15, 19, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26 points. I have 4, 10, 12, 15, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Wait, is that it? No way. No, 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 no. I, oh, yeah. 25. I'm sorry. And the four different animal types which brings me to 29. I have won this game by a score of 29 to 26. And I needed that final silver that let me draft this card right here to win the game. So it took to the very last moment. And that's it as far as Castles of Burgundy, the card game. Thank you for joining us. Please consider clicking on one of the videos on the screen right now. If YouTube is showing them to you, it's because they think there's a really good chance that you will like one of them. Also, check in the description down below for a link to my Patreon account and see how you can become more involved with the behind the scene process and support this channel. Research and find a tier that works for you. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.